Hey, welcome to the Clive Barker Podcast, episode 94. This was uh, me and Jose and Rob Ridenauer. Um We go through Clive Barker news. We talk about our April Fool's Day uh, pranks, which got a little bit out of hand. And we're going to talk about uh, tortured souls. Now, I know we've already done an episode when we did Rare Stories. We talked about tortured souls, but this was before uh, it was published in a book. So we're talking about the subterranean press tortured souls. Now, I I haven't started editing yet. I'm working on that. But I think that as we go along, there's a good possibility that I may have said that it was published by Dark Regions Press instead of subterranean press so i apologize to everyone involved there uh those are both publishers that do some clive barker uh smaller independent um special edition type books um but but it, this one is definitely subterranean press uh clive barker's tortured souls hey this is ryan If you listen to the show, you might know that I'm a realtor in Fairbanks, Alaska. So we have this vast audience, but I only know of one of our listeners who lives in Fairbanks, Alaska. Hi, Ross. Did you know you can help me by letting me find you a realtor in your part of the country or world? I have access to networks of realtors, and many of them I know from past experience as a board president and state realtor board member. The best part is it won't cost you anything. After talking with you, I get a sense of what type of person would be a good fit for you. And when I match you together, I get paid a portion of the commission after you buy or sell a property. If you're looking to move or buying property and and, uh, you'd like me to help you find a realtor that fits your needs, feel free to contact me through the site or call me directly at 907-978-2607. Thanks. Welcome again to episode 94 of the Clive Barker podcast. Uh, it's been a while, so sorry we didn't do one, but um, but we didn't do one last week, uh, mainly just because... Why was that? Oh yeah, well, uh, Easter. Easter weekend, and, and Jose was in the moving process, and I was busy with work, and I don't know, it just didn't... It was Rob too, had an exam to go oh, to. Oh yeah, yeah. It was it was too hard to put it together. But we're not um, we're not phasing out or anything. It just we just had to do a delay. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we got um, Jose. You're barricaded in the public library so that you can use their Wi-Fi, right? <laughs> yes, I still have <laughs> dial up in my house. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. and and Rob uh, and, and and Rob Ridenauer is here. Um, yeah, so I guess that kind of leads into the first thing we wanted to talk about was our April Fool's pranks. Mm -hmm. Um, very successful, it seems. Yeah, yeah, so, um, I I got the, uh, I was, I was, what was I named? The, uh, what was that post they put on, I was called the unanimous, uh, April Fool's champion, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 from, yeah, from the Clive Barker's Facebook page. So, yeah, that was, that was the big one. Um, and this was, Rob, this one was your idea to, uh, to say that, that the Scarlet Gospels would be delayed for one year. And and it was really awesome that the, had a picture that this is my face when I found out the news. Yeah. That was genius. Yeah, that was really good. 22 years, so. I think a lot of people actually thought it was going to be uh, delayed again. So, and there's an email from, um, I won't, I won't mention the names of the people at, at St. Martin's press, but, um, one from one person to six other people at St. Martin's press said, well, this is silly. Who's spreading this rumor? And it was a link to your, to your, uh, post. Yeah. And I think that they, they didn't realize 
that we were spreading the rumor. They thought that you heard it from some real person because you quoted, you know, a, a, yeah, I made, I made a, up a fake quote. Yeah. yeah, an anonymous source. And then, uh, yeah, so they and they cc'd it to all of the, these uh, top people at St. Martin's Press. And then and then somebody said, well, I'm going to talk to Clive Barker's people and we'll get to the bottom of this. And yeah. so so they sent it to Mark Miller and then he wrote to us because he wanted us not to say, hey, like, what's this about? He wrote to us to said, what? Not sure where this rumor got started, but if you'll see below from our publishers, it's 100 percent untrue. Can we rectify this on the message boards, etc.? So he wasn't coming to us to saying, hey, where did you get this information from? He was like saying, hey, I just want you guys to know this isn't true. And can you help us spread the word that this isn't true? Yeah. And so I was like, okay, actually, we did that. That's an April Fool's prank. <laughs> and and uh, people got really upset. I know. I mean, it, 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 it was only like one or two people that were like, hey, you know, look at the date. But other people were like, um, other people Just, were were upset. I, and I think people I are so ready to, to, to have the rug yanked out from under them with the Scarlet Gospels because it's we, everybody's waited so long for it. So it's it's not too far out of the realm of possibilities that now that we have a, a, a release date that that could get pushed back and we have to wait again. Yeah, I tried to I tried to post that on not uh, Occupy Media and, and like the first response I got was like not a funny April Fool's joke. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just I, I said, well, yeah. it wasn't going because the guy kept getting like he got like ten likes. So I was like, I'll take it down from here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So it was mainly mainly our Facebook page and our website uh, where it got started, um, but it got it got reposted and and then the other one was saying that you, you, Jose that you move I I I posted that you moved to Arizona, which is true. I, I was saying goodbye to the Scarlet Gospels because I was moving to a house that only had dial up or something. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. obviously, or know, to the Clive Barker podcast. People. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it was like a here, goodbye, so. Jose post, and I used that picture of you like driving away and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and people were were sharing it. So like people were sharing it as if it was real news and saying, "Oh, sorry to see you go and and you know, you oh you were a big part of the podcast and it's too bad and you know, this isn't forever people. because we know that someday you'll get your internet back and then you'll be able to come back on and yeah, like the very next day when I arrived to the new house, I had like guys from Cox Cable coming in and, <laughs> yeah. and putting it up. So yeah, it was a funny joke though. Um, I, I actually do. I, I run into say, that's a real problem that I run into here in Alaska all the time. Is people buy love a house and then they buy it and they can't get internet where they're going. Oh yeah, yeah. Or they can't get any like four uh, G signal or yeah. cell phone reception yeah. or something like that. But. The Scarlet Gospels is still coming out on May nineteenth. Yeah, and uh, I'm I'm still here. Yeah, and, he, uh, he's <laughs> not really not really barricaded in the library. No. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm barricaded a, in a, my library. Yeah. That's just a good fun thing to do. I think it was yeah. just fun, and it was out of fun. Yeah, you know, just out of fun, and I, I. It's funny though. It's like the more successful you are with April Fool's Day, the worse you feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> That's a good. That's a good point. I, I like yeah. the picture you posted of uh, you saying I'm sorry and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. looking down, You're face palming. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I got scared when when all of those people at St. Martin's Press started. Uh, emailing. Yeah, I, got, I, I, I did too a little bit. I didn't because I thought much. like I I, I thought oh god that you know what if they said that we're hurting their pre order sales or something. Yeah, I know. I did. That crossed my mind. I. Yeah, I, did, I started getting a little nervous. I really did because I actually, I actually po apologized to Thomas and the Gobin about yeah. it. Yeah, well, he thought it was hilarious, though. Yeah, I know. Yeah. He did. I don't know he how. Did. Yeah, Mark, we fooled Mark Miller too. He said, "Oh, you guys got me. That's a good one." He said, "You even fooled the publishers." Yeah. yeah. So that was pretty effective. Uh, good job, Rob. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Oh um, man. So yeah, oh, that was know, our first attempt at. Let me just say this. You remember, I think it was the last episode that we did where I mentioned something like there were people who send me messages saying that I don't believe the Scarlet Gospels is coming out on yeah. May 19th. Yeah. I'll believe it when I see it. And I was yeah. like, I already read the book. It's, it's here. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Uh, I was thinking maybe those people are going to be like, I knew it. 
I knew it. Yeah, 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 right. People are so ready to believe that that that's not going to happen. Yeah, I'll that's know. what made me think of that too. That 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 guy that you talked to. Yeah, it, it, that's amazing. That you know, it's got it's got cover pictures. It's already written. <laughs> it, yeah, it's got a I release know. date. May nineteenth. They, they, yeah. they have all this. All these giveaways are, are you know coming out. You know from all yeah. these different. You know, Rube Morg recently yeah. had a put up a new one. So yeah, again, it's not. You know, it's 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 on the way. The gospels are on the way. Yeah, I hope some yeah. of the typos get cleaned up out of it. I mean, it's an uncorrected proof. So I'm, I'm guessing oh, sure. an advanced reader copy is the same thing as an uncorrected proof. Yeah, I, I, most of the time, I think. But yeah, I mean, other than that, I thought it was great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, do we want to go on to Clive Barker news? Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Let's okay. Do it. Um, a lot of exciting stuff. Yeah. So the this one's not exactly exciting, but the Leviathan documentary has been delayed. Uh, originally, I think as we're recording this today, it would have been available. Or no, it was on pre-order started on e- Easter, and then they would have been shipping out today, right? Or today I, yeah. and tomorrow, I think. Uh, no, the the 13th one uh, would have been officially released, and that's when I think oh, okay. uh, people like – didn't you uh, say y'all at, y'all contributed to the Kickstarter? I think y'all yeah. would have got them that yeah. day. Yeah, I yeah. did. Yeah. But he had to delay for another week, I think, because of the people who physically make the, the DVDs. Yeah. yeah. He said, uh, we have had to push back the release by a few weeks. The exporting of the docs to get to the disc makers was, has taken a lot longer than we had scheduled for so he says, currently disc one and disc three are ready to be printed and proofed, yeah. but disc two won't be ready until next week, thus pushing us back. Yeah, I mean, I can't so, see, I can't see people really getting angry about that because it's, you know, it's like this is a thing that didn't exist before, and we had no, you know, sure. He, I mean, he gave us a release date and everything, and he changed it, but it's like, does that really hurt our lives that we're not going to see that like a week sooner? Not really. Yeah. Not really. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so he I, says, therefore, uh, pre-orders will commence on April 13th as opposed to April 6th, yeah. with the product being released within 28 days after pre-order. So that will be uh, 28 days after April 13th. That's going to yeah. be the official release date. Yep, and we'll, um, we'll, when we get that, we'll go through it, and maybe we'll have Gary Smart back on with the director mm-hmm. uh, and talk about it. It's um, We're going to have like nine hours worth of stuff to watch, right, when that comes out. Yeah. Yeah. There was another news report on that. I don't think I made a blog post of it, though. It was where it showed the breakdown of the chapter names and uh, how long they oh, were. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't – but I don't think I made a blog post yeah, of it. Yeah, but he – that wasn't the first time that was posted. I think that they oh. did they did that uh, uh, like a month back also. Okay, I, I had yeah. never seen that. I thought that was new. Um, Jose referenced that right before we had Gary Smart on because it was he was like, "Hey, if I'm reading this right, it, this is like you've got three hours worth of bonus features." Yeah, I added you it add, up. added up the the times. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So he even he even updated it, I guess, because there was still like one of the special features was about Hellraiser three, and he didn't have the full running time for that. And I think he gave us that full running time when we were talking to him on the phone. Oh, so, okay. Uh, yeah, you remember that? Yeah. And then, so on April first, um, th- this was this was a, a po- an April first post that wasn't a joke uh, that you did, Rob. That the Entwined is going to begin fi- filming in May in Atlanta. Yeah, that's just wow. Right now. Yeah, that's, so you should ju- you should go over there and they're and, well. And now uh, we've also found out they're doing casting calls, right? Yeah, I should go and try to get a part. It and- says here, Revelations has just tweeted some big news concerning the upcoming feature of the Entwined. Which is being produced by Clyde Barker's Seraphim Films. I don't think this is based on any uh, Clyde Barker story, though. It's no, just no. Uh, he's just a producer. And it says production offices have now opened in Covington, Georgia, well, with filming to begin May 25th. Robert Hollocks is directing from a sk- script he's co-written with Clyde Barker, Sarah Jane Dalby, Christian Francis, Robert Hollocks, Wolf Lane, and Mark Allen Miller. So they might have done like a, a pass on the script and yeah. uh, maybe introduced a few elements or cleaned it up a bit. Yeah, and but it's going to be – it's going to be – it's a Clive Barker Presents, so it's not mm-hmm. a – yeah. Yeah, so the story is about a couple who discover that their destinies are entwined with an ancient and powerful spirit who whose evil threatens to engulf them both. Uh, yeah, so there yeah. you go. I think the spirit is the Baron Samadhi, the voodoo 
guy. Oh, wow. Yeah. I hope it's a. I hope it's a major release. I hope it gets a theatrical big release. I, you know, I don't know if it what the. Like maybe it's too early to. Yeah. You know, know on that, but I hope it gets into theaters. Yeah, I mean, it's funny though because it's not as big of a stigma to be a, like a direct-to-video movie anymore. Like it, you. Yeah, a lot. yeah, I mean, I think that you can have good movies that don't. You know, they it's like they just decide it's more cost-effective to just release them on demand and. Mm-hmm. I don't we know. even have TV shows that are exclusive to like places like like Netflix and stuff like that. So yeah, nowadays, yeah. who would have thought like ten years ago that you know you could that Amazon dot com would be making original movies and TV uh, yeah, shows? That's true. They it's like, there. oh yeah, you mean that place where you buy used books? Mm-hmm. That's right. You're right. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, was it uh, Netflix? Netflix has a Daredevil show coming up. I know, yeah, yeah. That so looks, they got a great. they got a Marvel license, some company that just would was mailing out DVDs to people. Uh, Vincent D'Onofrio is going to be the kingpin, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, cool. I saw the pictures; it looks great. Yeah. So hopefully, the entwine will also, uh, uh, you know, be a success. Let's yeah, hope so. yeah. We don't know. I'm, maybe they don't even know how it's going to be distributed yet. I suppose it depends on the whole the the entire budget. It, it it amazes me the more I hear interviews from people that the more that you find out that half of the budget is marketing, yeah, or more, and that that's just crazy to me. It seems like a waste. Uh, and, and on April second, uh, Rob, you posted about uh, a new Kickstarter featuring uh, art by Clyde Barker. So. Um, what the one with the dream? Uh, the dream. Yeah, by Z- by Zimble. Uh, that magazine, the, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be cool. Now, that's now is that there was a lot of different pa- packages you could get. With the, there was one specific to Clyde Barker though. I wonder if it's still available. There were only ten available. Oh wow! Absolutely. It, I was trying to find the actual link to the post that we did. <laughs> oh, it's on our notes on uh, on one note yeah. there. Yeah, I'm and then the Kickstarter. To, it got mixed in with another link, so that's why I was trying to. So the uh, Kickstarter has 18 days to go. It's at 1542 out of 3,000 dollar goal. So it's uh, Zimble presents Gail Pataki's Freaks and Clive Barker the Private Dream Notebook. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah plus poetry, short stories, culture clash interview. Forty-five dollars, you can get a Zimbal package plus Gail Pataki or Clive Barker print. Didn't this? Uh, wasn't this like a, a stretch goal for like Imaginer at one point? Wasn't there like some kind of thing about the, the dream notebooks of Clive Barker as a stretch goal for Imaginer? I think I remember something like this. There was a there was a um, the adolescent notebook. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it yeah. was. It was. Yeah, it was from a uh, young period of Clive Barker. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, here's the pledge. If you pledge $150 or more, you get uh, to just a specific Clyde Barker patch. It comes with issue five, the Clyde Barker Dream Notebooks, plus a pre order of issue six of the Zimble magazine, the Clyde yeah. Barker paintings, plus signed Clyde Barker art print. And we'll have a link in the show notes, but if, you, if you're listening to this and you want to look it up, you can yeah. also go to Kickstarter and probably if you search for Zimbol Z Y M B O L, I doubt I can't imagine there'd be a whole lot of other things that show up in there. So I would do no. that. And it's uh, the summer 2015 issue five of Zimbol. So oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. It looks pretty as good. Of, as of this recording, there's 18 days to go. So yeah, plenty of time to get something in. And they're over halfway. So it looks yeah. like they'll probably make it. Yeah, I hope so. If they have a goal of three thousand dollars, and they're yeah. a little over fifteen hundred dollars right now. And and when we talked to uh, Thomas Nigovin last, he, he, uh, we talked a lot about Kickstarter, and he's a big proponent of of this you know system of kind of eliminating the middleman and marketing directly to the you know to the people who would buy buy your products and stuff. So so it's kind of a new way of of thinking. Um, what's next? Okay, so, oh, uh, Dark Delicacies Midian Unmade, you can pre-order that now. Um, and if you, so if you get it at the Dark Delicacies store, you know, and Del House and the owner of Dark Delicacies is also an editor, uh, for this book, 
if you pre-order it there, they'll you'll get it with a whole bunch of uh, autographs. Yeah, they yeah. have not they, they've not announced them yet, but it'll be with a bunch of the people that contributed to the yeah. To so that. some of them are already published authors. Uh, some of the invited authors for Media yeah. Unmade already yeah. you know have books selling on Amazon. So I'm, I'm guessing that he's going to do a big uh, event where they'll be there to sign books. Yeah, and and for people who can't make it all the way to you know Burbank that you can always you yeah. can always pre-order one a special order one I've I've bought stuff from them I, I think I've said this before but I've bought stuff from them autographed without uh-huh. being there yeah um, I, I bought uh, a first edition of uh, Thief of Always I think I call the store like Del Howison posted something on Facebook saying I got Clyde Barker signed books for sale so you know yeah. here's my number and I called him and he answered and I bought the uh, first edition of the Thief of Always Signed by Clive Barker, so that was that was oh, pretty, nice. pretty and, easy. Yeah, yeah, and it's a really cool store, and they deserve support. So, mm-hmm. you know. yeah. Once he drove you to the, uh, the bus station or train station, or, no, he, he dro- yeah, he, foot, he, right? he he drove me to my hotel after it was over. Yeah. I I walked and I on my GPS on my phone, it didn't look like it was that far, and then uh-huh. I don't know why, but then it ended up being three miles. I walked with a broken foot. To get to the <laughs> to get to the book Jeez. signing, I can imagine you hobbling. Yeah, and don't forget on August first uh, at two p.m. in uh, Dark Delicacies in Burbank, both editors Joseph Nassis and Del Howison and some of the contributors will be signing the hardcover editions of the book. Yeah, that'll be awesome. And speaking of Midian Unmade, so uh, Del Del recently shared um, an alternate cover. Uh, and this being an audio pod- podcast, we don't need to talk about it too much. But well, we can put the picture in the show notes. But uh, it, it was basically it was just basically a whole bunch of words. Yeah. So it said Midian Unbound: Tales of Clive Barker's Nightbreed, edited by Joe Nassis and Del House, an introduction by Clive Barker, featuring all new stories by Amber Benson, Nancy Holder, uh, <laughs> Sheenan McGuire, Weston o- Ox, David J. Oh, Show, geez. Stephen Woodworth, and more. So it was like a whole. It was just a whole bunch of. It, it looks okay, but I kind of like. I like the one better that they. The, you know the 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 official one better. Yeah, I, I don't. Agree. I don't get the. Uh, I don't get the uh, Midian Unbound. I mean, that's not even the name of the book. That was yeah. just, I guess, an alternate title. Yeah, Midian yeah. Unmade is makes more sense because Midian it was, was yeah, actually it was unmade. The, yeah. It was always the the title for the project. It was always yeah. Midian and Unmade. I've never heard of it being called Midian Unbound. So. Yeah, Unbound seems like kind of a lazy title. Like when people put Rise of the or Rising in the title of something. Yeah. yeah. Or Son of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> House yeah. of Midian. Yeah. Uh, Son of Midian. Midian uh, Unleashed. Revenge of the Son of Midian. That's the other one that that drives me nuts. Is Unleashed. Uh huh. Yeah. It's like, okay, so it was on a dog leash, and now it's not anymore. They did that for all of the uh, Barkerverse comic books. They did the Ecto Kid Unleashed. Oh, yeah, God. Hyperkind Unleashed, all those. <laughs> yeah. <I'm shocked>. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so what's the next one? So what we got? Uh, oh, um, Scarlet. Scarlet Gospel's audio sample, and there was a link to something on the front cover of the of the um, advanced reader copy that I never went to, but I don't. I wonder if that's the same thing. I I never. I didn't. I didn't listen to that, but I was told yeah. that it was very good. I was. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm very tempted to go to it, but I, I just want to kind of keep it yeah. to you know, spoiler free. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't really have time to listen to it yet, but uh, because I was moving. Yeah. And uh, but I remember when I when we got the advanced copies at uh, on the other on the back cover, it said something like, "If you want to hear a sample of the audiobook, go to blah blah blah." Yeah. And I went there, um, and it was still wasn't up, so it wasn't oh. it wasn't there yet. So okay. I figured they already put it up at some point, and uh, I'm you, curious about it. I'm going to listen to it. You went farther than me. I didn't do that. But I, I, yeah, I mean, I would imagine if it's a sample, it's probably the beginning because that that uh, the beginning of that book is really kind of a gut punch as far as like setting the tone for for what the rest of the book is going to be like. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. looking at it right now. They put it up on SoundCloud, and it's like a 10 minute extract. Oh, okay. Or excerpt of these Scarlet Gospels. I'm sorry. I bet it's the first chapter, but that's what Could I be. would do if it were me. But it's mm-hmm. not up to me. Do you guys remember when uh, Aberat 2 
had like a website. Well, there was a website called the Books of the Aberats. And, yeah. Uh, there was this little animation with the, the map of the islands. And then there was a place where you could hear an excerpt of Aberat 2 read by Clive Barker. And uh, I remember yeah. that. That was really cool. I remember it was like – it was also like 10 minutes or something. It was really yeah. cool. And uh, Mark Miller and somebody made that animated sequence with the map. Oh, that was uh, – you're talking about the book trailer. Yeah. That was for Abrat 3. I'm oh, talking about okay. Abrat 2, yeah. Okay. There was a website called The Books of the Abrat. It doesn't exist anymore. I only have screen caps of it. I bet it was yeah. Harper Collins put that together then. Yeah, I think it was still Harper Collins, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, you know, audio book of the Scarlet Gospels. Mm-hmm. It's going to be interesting. Actually, there's something I want to point out, which is kind of – I don't know if this is intentional or accidental, uh, a typo. But I went to the Macmillan audio page. And uh, I opened it up. It says, listen to an advanced excerpt from the audiobook edition of Clive Barker's The Scarlet Gospel. They forgot an S there. In my apologies, I, I, I forgot to put an S on. I wrote The Scarlet Gospel in my, in my, um, my April you? Fool's apology post. Oh. And so I repeated yeah. that typo over and over again. It's like, eh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, so we'll leave an uh, uh, We'll leave a link to this on the show notes, so people, yeah. if you wanna, if you wanna go there and listen to it, you can go follow the link. Yeah, uh, there's a pinhead panto crater medallion. I don't, and and those were available in like bronze and silver. Silver. Yeah. Yeah. And there's one that you see it comes with a uh, autographed by it's autographed by Clyde Barker and. Uh, the guy who designed it was uh, Dave Richardson. He uh, he's autographed. So is he smoke. also the artist that made that that uh, that painting that looks like stained glass window of Pinhead? I think that's that's Christian Francis who did that. Is it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I thought I thought it might be Christian Francis. It kind of okay. looks like his style. Yeah. So um, yeah. Yeah, Panto Crater means uh, it's it's a specific definition of Christ. It's yeah. um, it comes from Greek and it's a translation of one of the many names of God in Judaism. So it's basically just a fancy uh, fancy okay. fancy name uh, to refer to a, a God. So they they added oh, okay. that to Pinhead. Pinhead Panto Crater. Um, no spoilers. Pinhead, you know about the Scarlet Gospels, but Pinhead does um, go through some transformations in the book. And, uh, you know, so that's cool. I, I really like this little medallion. I'm thinking yeah. about getting one. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I forget. How much are they? Uh, oh, $29.99 and $79.99. There's a pewter one that's cheaper, and then there's yeah. the bronze one that's more expensive. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I'd probably get the pewter one because I, I don't need to go nuts with bronze. Yeah, I'll definitely put that in the shelf right next to the book. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. There was a Scarlet Gospels... Uh... The, it was like a trailer. They oh, were uh, for the audio book. Yeah, for the audio book. That was pretty cool. I did watch that. So it was a it was a video trailer. Yeah, uh, I think I attached it. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's on YouTube. Uh, it was yeah. posted by Revelations, and they they have a book trailer, which now seems to be the norm for books. I mean, there was book trailers for Abrat Two, book trailer yeah. for Abrat Three. There was a book trailer for uh, Mister Be Gone. Yeah. So now there's a book trailer for um, the Scarlet Gospels. People like going to YouTube, I guess. It's a book trailer for the audio book, actually. Yeah. So. Yeah. Which, again, is coming out on May 19th. Yeah. It's um, just they had a, the line they used in the trailer, the guy that's reading it. It's a really cool line. It just I like the, uh, the way uh, the language or the, the, or the way that kind of uh, – The delivery? The delivery, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, I can't remember. The line he utters is like, basically, uh, well, I don't want to spoil it. I'll just go watch the trailer if you want to have spoilers. Yeah, I, I'm reading your post. You said, after watching the trailer, all I can say is that I'm ready for this book to come out now, damn it. Pinhead <laughs> yeah. sounds more pissed off than ever, and it appears the name itself is starting to get on his nerves, if you know what I mean. Yep. <sighs> yeah. Pretty exciting. Uh, and then last thing, of course, there is a um, – and we were just talking about this before the show, but there's a uh, there's a, um, a production of Hi- Clive Barker's play History of the Devil in Phoenix, Arizona. 
yeah, what are the odds? Yeah, I right, mean, right when I you move, move here. There. Yeah, I move here, and it's like, boom, I'm, I'm like, finally getting some <laughs> yeah. time to, you know, uh, go on the computer and see so what's new. And, you know, I've been out of the loop for a few days. So I go there, and I see this awesome poster. It says here, Clyde Barker's The History of the Devil, an Arizona premiere. And it says... Recommended for mature audiences, adult themes, language, and nudity. Opens on April 10, which is this Friday, uh, and and is going to be on until the 25th. And it's it's cool. It's oh. really cool. I'm, so that's tomorrow. I love this that's play. tomorrow. Then, as we're um, yeah, it starts. Yeah, as we're yeah. recording this. What Opening day are night you? is going to be tomorrow. Wow. What what day are you and Sarah going? Oh, we're going on Saturday. It's going to be the second day they're open. So. Oh, okay. um, I actually bought tickets for the opening by mistake, and I, I called them and I changed them for Saturday because, you know, it's kind of complicated to go there at 8 p.m. Uh, to Phoenix on uh, Friday night. Uh, it, it would be a little complicated because, of course, uh, you know, uh, there's it, – it's a busy day. It's a work day. Yeah. So yeah. It, it would be – yeah. So we're going there on Saturday, and um, – it's amazing. I, I already bought tickets, and I'm I'm stoked to watch it. So it's going to be a great Saturday evening. Well, that's and, that's cool. Yeah, you'll have to you'll have to tell us about it. And if if you can get any uh, any interviews or anything, maybe we could make an episode of it or not. Oh yeah, but, I'll yeah. try to get some pictures of the play if I can. I don't know if I'm authorized to get any pictures. Uh, yeah, I don't want to. I want to. I don't want to take out my phone in the middle of it. So yeah. I'll see what I can do. But definitely, you know, expect pictures of the theater and. Yeah, you know. Well, and with with plays, mostly they, you know, you get to you do get to meet the cast and stuff as you're walking out. So, so maybe you get a chance to talk to some of them. Yeah, let, let's hope so. Or, <laughs> or if you're, you know, phone. if it's more comfortable, you can even you know make arrangements for them to to do a, a you know a telephone interview. Yeah, with them. yeah, Something. exactly, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So um, interesting, and this is part of another uh, larger cycle, I think. Actually, it was Sarah. She was reading about the play, and she's like, "Oh, did you know that this is about some kind of like cycle that the theater of Phoenix is doing uh, that involves uh, uh, nudity and plays with nudity?" So huh. interesting. Um, I guess it will work with this play because this play has a lot of, you know, sexual situations. I would say, yeah. uh, and um, history of the devil. I mean, I still need you, to read that. Uh, yeah, I've not read it yet. It's, I've got the book. I've got the both playbook, both the the books that he released. Uh, it was at Incarnations, and I can't remember the other one. Forms of Heaven. Heaven. Yeah, yeah, and it's in there. I still need to read that. I want to read it very badly. And I also recommend oh. if you can find it, there is a production, an audio production of this play by the Seeing Ear Theater, uh, the History of the Devil. It's it's dramatized. It's got all these like sound effects and all these different voices, and it's really amazing. I. Um, oh, my- that's, I'd like to get that. That'd be nice to have. Yeah. I think you can find it on YouTube. Uh, you know, I think someone has uploaded it to YouTube. So if if I can, I'll add a, a link of it to the show notes as well. Well, we don't have something picked out for our next episode, so we could uh, we could pick you know one of those two playbooks, the one that has history of the devil, and we could talk about you know because then you all have just gone and seen it, and maybe that's sure. not a bad way to go for our next one. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's good. Buys me more time to, 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 to finish Everville also. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, Everville. Because, uh, yeah, we're going to tackle that one. That's going to be the major novel that we're going to yeah. tackle next. And we're, we're still reserving episode 100 for uh, for something big. Yes. Yeah. Let's see what we can do. Let's yeah. see what we can do. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, that was... Yeah, what is this this link here? The oh, that that Macmillan link Mac Audio. Oh, that is the uh, the link to the uh, Macmillan Audio page where you can listen to the excerpt of the. Scarlet. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. So that's just yeah, that's connected to the other one. Okay, um, so th- I think that's it for news, right? I mean, we we'd already talked about that they're having a casting call now for um, for the um, the entwined. entwined. Yeah. So so hopefully hopefully Rob you could get in there. I'll try. Yeah. <laughs> I could talk somebody. Yeah. I'll maybe contact that 
Maybe I'll contact that production office. Yeah, well, and we can also try to do it through Seraphim, too, and see if we can get you in there. And then you could be kind of behind the scenes, and, and it would it would be smart for them to help promote the movie. Yeah. That's only about three hours from here. You could be a, an extra that gets killed or something. That'd be nice. <laughs> I like that very much. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he, so our main topic here is Tortured Souls, and we, of course, have done an episode about Tortured Souls before, uh, but back then we were just reading a PDF of it, um, so now we, um, but now we've got the full, uh, the full book, the Dark Regions Press Edition. Yeah, when, I got a question, um, mm-hmm. I remember, well, this... Uh, this came out originally in the toys, the figures of the Tortured Souls, right? Yeah. It came inside the, the boxes. And so yeah. for a long time, that was the only place where you could read the, the story until someone typed it up, put it on the internet. Did, yeah. did you have any chance to see if they changed anything from the actual Tortured Soul text? I don't think so. I think it's the same. Okay. Yeah. So it's a it's 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 still tortured souls, the legend of primordium, right? Yeah, and you know, and it's got the six parts. Yeah, the the main difference in this is the illustrations um, by Egerton, right? Yeah, Bob, Bob Eggle, Eggleton. Yeah, yeah, um, and which he, are awesome. I think they're great, and he did the that cover painting. Uh, you have uh, your sign too, right? Mine's not signed. Yeah, yeah. So I have I have the limited five hundred, you know, one, and mine's number sixty four. Yeah, I just got the regular trade paperback because I just wanted to read the story. Yeah, yeah. Well, and when we and that was, you know, we wanted to do an episode about it, and 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 so I asked Mark Miller. I said, and this was years, a couple, like three years ago, two years ago if we could get a copy of that and he's like i don't have the key i don't know i don't have access to everything but i you know i can get you some things and he got us a copy of the of the pdf oh cool to read yeah cuz like that was the my biggest problem is like i'm married i'm not going to go buy all these hideous toys and stand them up around the house yeah you know it's like especially what is um the the doctor talisac that yeah, is a pretty- that's a gruesome horrifying looking thing <laughs> yeah, he's got like a. Pretty cool. What is it? He's uh, he's hanging from his lips, and he's got a and he's got a womb. Yeah, he's yeah, he's got. Back. Yeah. I know, I know. Well, that I know. that was pretty cool, though. It was from McFarland, right? Yeah, yeah, McFarlane. yeah, exactly. All right. I actually, yeah. did a I actually did another series of toys after that. I don't know if that follows this story of, you know, you know the legend of Primordium, but uh, they actually yeah. did a series of other. Toys after you know they did the, 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 the first series, and you know in our in our last episode when we talked about this story we we kind of talked about how this this um, city primordium seems to be like in a in a place out of time or separated somehow from the rest of the world. Then it has modern right. cars or something. Yeah, it has modern cars and it has um, a limousine. But, yeah, but it also has people killing each other with swords and. And uh, but it's got like this science where you can make build monsters, and it just sort of made me think: what if Primordium is in hell? Oh, that's that's interesting. That's a cool point. And yeah, because it seemed like you know after reading the Scarlet Gospels, this seemed like a city that you would see there. I was going to ask you that. In fact, if that. This felt like, you know, you said in the Scarlet Gospels that, uh, if you might have to you know, delete this from the podcast, but I just want to ask y'all personally, mm-hmm. that it felt like, this. you fit, said it felt like the Scarlet Gospels hell felt like it had a lot of different, like it was different districts and stuff like that. Part of Oh, those, no, that yeah. was comparing it to um, Mr. Be Gone. Oh, okay. Yeah, because Mr. Be Gone has the nine circles like in um, Dante's, Dante's Inferno. Inferno. Yeah, oh, yes. and uh, and we didn't really see that in in the Scarlet Gospels, but this, this I don't know. Primordium kind of feels like it could be, but they they I mean he says outright it's it's you know one of the first cities of on Earth, you know before Alexandria and Rome, mm-hmm. and 
I know. Yeah, and yeah. So it's interesting. I don't. I mean, maybe it got relocated, or maybe they thought that because this is a story that's going into toys, it doesn't need to be that detailed. Or yeah, I was gonna go for that one. I was gonna go yeah. for this is like. It's like, I guess, the Jump Tribe thing, Yeah, you know? It's like it's a little self-contained universe that yeah. maybe he didn't think much of it literally, literary yeah. wise, but uh, but then when, when this, you know, you put it all together, you start reading it like a book, yeah. you realize that, you know, it, it, it's, it's self-contained. It, it doesn't really seem to fit with reality or, you know, any other of Clyde Barker's uh, universes. Well, it's kind of like Maximilian Bacchus that way too, right? There's just stuff that happens that doesn't make sense and you just have to accept it. Yeah. 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 Like, um, you know, this is a modern city and people are, are driving away and, the, and they, get, they get killed by bandits. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> The woman, uh, the what was she? The yeah, the the card, the the tarot card reader. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I like the descriptions that he gives a lot of this stuff. I like there was a part he talked about it. There's a part in the city where it's called the vomitorium. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Where it's like consu- consumed food that's eaten again. It's given to like the people that are, I guess are poor. Yeah, in primordium. You know- that was a real thing with Romans, actually. They yeah. they would binge on uh, banquets, and then they would have like a place where they could go and, you know, basically just stick their fingers down their throat and puke it up so they can eat some more. Yeah, uh, yeah that's which gross. is like, yeah, the ultimate you know indulgence you can do is like and, keep eating, and then when you're full, you just have some. some and sort I of I'd never drink. heard that they that they sold that again, but I wouldn't be surprised. Well, Clyde Barker said about this, he said, There's a city called Primordium, which I will certainly go back to. It is a city of insurrections and anarchy and dark sex. And there's a lot of sex in the story and a lot of revenge. I wanted the world to feel like one of Webster's plays where you've got this kind of effortless fantasy, where in The White Devil, there's this kind of casual reference to one of the characters being a werewolf. I think he's referring to something else here. And then he goes like, and you know, nobody makes a big deal out of it. There it is. The feelings that people have in Webster's plays, the profundity of their anger and their need for revenge and their twisted sense of possessiveness over one another, Mm -hmm. particularly over women, turns them into monsters even if they take human form. I wanted very much for Primordium to be that world and be a place where the least of the creatures is monstrous. Sometimes monstrousness can be beautiful. Yeah. So he said that in 2001, which was when the Tortured Souls came out. So and that and that's really interesting, and that that brings up a point that you know I think we talked about this a little bit before, but uh, people's disappointment that the Tortured Souls movie got, never got made. Yeah. And oh yeah. I feel a little hesitant to see that done because because there's going to be there would have to be so much people wouldn't accept the, this book the way it is in movie form. No, oh, absolutely not. We not would. I, Maybe we would no, like yeah. it. We would love it, right? But yeah. but general audiences might say this movie doesn't make any sense. And <laughs> I think I think uh, maybe uh, executives wouldn't even let a lot of this stuff, you know, make it. Yeah, change, you know, yeah. Into the screen in the first place. And that's that's where the problem is because it would get it would have to get uh, vivisected, right? To, to and put together. So that it's not recognizable anymore. Well, we don't know exactly what form the uh, Tortured Souls script was going to take. I mean, if it was going to reinterpret some parts of the story, you know, like like in Hellraiser, it's not the same as the Hellbound Heart. It, yeah. it changed when it was turned into a movie. And the same thing happened with uh, but only slightly. Candyman, you know, uh, yeah. although that one wasn't written by Clive Barker. I mean, the script. But uh, who knows? Maybe he would have changed a few things. But definitely, I think that. Uh, well, didn't somebody you know, else act- write the script for Tortured Souls? Right? I, th- I don't think it was Clive Barker. I think yeah, it, it was, was uh, Clive Barker. Was it? Was it? It was a man named uh, Hans uh, Randolph. Oh. He wrote a uh, he wrote a uh, man thing. Rodionoff. Yeah, he wrote Man yeah. Thing, the movie, some other scripts too. Yeah, but he was oh, the one that. Okay. And I remember reading a reading a description of it, and it was really different. Yeah, so Hans Rodionov, I think he was involved with a few other Clyde Barker projects. And they showed so. a visual trailer for it, which is just taking 
chunks of other movies and sticking them together to, you know, make a trailer. Mm. And it didn't, it wasn't, it wasn't really like this book. Yeah, it was meant to be Clyde Barker's, uh, he was going to direct the movie. But then, of course, things got in the way, like they usually do with uh, some of these projects, especially when you're talking about making a movie. There's always so many things that can go wrong. You know, you you might not find uh, producers or, you know, uh, the studio is interested, but then someone leaves the studio and someone replaces them and they're not interested anymore, which was kind of like what happened to Midnight Meat Train. Yeah. So you never know what, at least with books, you know that it's just one man writing the book and then, you know, the book gets sent to the publisher and edited and then it's put out. Yeah. With, with movies, it's, it's, it's different. It's really yeah. more of a collaborative thing. Yeah. They could become unrecognizable by the time they get to the end. You were talking about, uh, not buying all the figures because you thought some of them were too gruesome. I remember, and I think I have this in my hard drive somewhere. You remember when Clyde Barker used to you used to be a, a regular guest at Loveline, yeah, uh, that yeah. radio show with Doctor Drew and uh, what mm-hmm. was the other guy's name? I forgot. Adam Carolla. So I, I I have somewhere in my hard drives. I need to find this. I have a 2001 episode. Uh, I think it was July 20, 2001, where he went there and he was promoting the Tortured Souls and he brought figures for them to play with. And he got <laughs> Dr. Drew and Adam like going nuts over the figures. Like, well, really? look at this guy. It's like hanging from – he's hanging <laughs> from like these chains and it's like this This is gruesome. Yeah, yeah. I got I got that. I think I, I need to find that and if I can find that, I'll wow. – uh, I'll send it to you guys. So uh, that would I don't cool. think we can put that on the podcast because, you know, it's obviously a, another radio show. But it was really fun. I yeah. have one of the I have one of the figures, but I didn't open it. It was uh, the Vino Antom, Antom- Anatomica. Yeah, the, Anatomica. The, yeah, the 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 guy that's with the that has the hood that goes over his eyes. Yeah. So yeah. does this guy, the Bob Eggleton, the, does he make songs of these characters in the book? Because I don't have the book. Uh, he does, yeah, yeah, and in fact, the cover—I uh, think that's Vena Anatomica on the cover of the Is Tortured that... Souls book. Oh, yeah, I was wondering. I thought it was, but I wasn't positive. Because he has sort of a skeletal face. Yeah, because they they, they kind of call him Death in the book. So. Yeah, mm. I mean, he doesn't look exactly like the toy, but I think, I, but I'm sure that's him. Okay. Each uh, each chapter, right before it starts, comes with a, like a little. An image that he's yeah. drawn, and and the uh, and the inside cover has a, a drawing of Primordium, with maybe that's not actually. I take that back. Maybe that figure is um, what's his name the the one that can that reconfigure the creator. people. Oh yeah, that's a uh, Agonistes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, Agonistes or yeah. I think maybe the, that's the one figure. Yeah, the one figurine that I always liked was um, Lucidic. Oh yeah, yeah. Lucidic. Yeah, I don't know exactly how to pronounce it, uh, but yeah, it, it's great. I think it kind of it reminds me. The name reminds me of Angelique, you know, yeah. <laughs> from Bloodline. So, and um, um, and and Ziles Krieg. Uh, he, there's a drawing of Ziles Krieger before yeah. he becomes the uh, the Scythe Meister when he was just the assassin. Yeah, so there's a Morgan picture Brown. of him with his you know in his regular clothes and he's holding a scythe. Yeah, you know, also, also what I like. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was going to say what I really liked about the book is that it's a really, there's really, it's a really good love story. I mean, you know, I like the relationship between uh, yeah. Zales Krieger and uh, what's her name, uh, Lucidic. Yeah, yeah. But what was her name before that? Is it always that name? Or uh, I think no, she did have an. I thought she had another name. She and did. Maybe, uh, yeah, but I can't remember it offhand. But it was, I don't it, have the book right now. It was a. You know, I was you know, drawn drawn yeah. to that a lot. You know, between their their love story. Yeah, yeah. Um, There's a lot of a little bit of Shakespearean elements in there. Yeah, Romeo yeah. and Juliet or something. It's funny that you mentioned this being a story because um, I'm looking at Revelations and uh, he says here that torture souls. He says I promised what I would do if I was going to go into the idea of figurines. I would make the most intense figurines i could make 
I've written a story, a six-part story, so each character gets a story to go with them. And if you collect all six, you get this huge Clyde Barker piece of fiction. And and then he also mentioned, um, I'm trying to find the exact quote here. The stories are about how a group of individuals fall in love and find redemption in this dark place. It's actually, in a weird way, rather optimistic. And <laughs> This is from an interview that he gave yeah. to Times L.A. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know if it's optimistic or not. It seems like even though they they he you know they destroyed the um the aristocracy or the 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 empire that uh, you don't really get a feeling that thing whether if things are getting better or not. I think Lucidic at the end of the story comes to terms with her own destiny. Yeah. And uh, you know and and she becomes kind of a, a, f- a figure that a lot of people look up to, and um, and basically, you know, it's 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 about immortality and transformation. And in the Clyde Barker stories, transformation is always this this thing that's violent but very yeah. positive. It it gives them like more abilities, more power. It gives them yeah. more power. So. To think, I hesitated. Yeah, exactly. Kind of like <laughs> that. Yeah. yeah. But that's, cool that's great that you mentioned. That's great that you mentioned that primordium. You could look at it as being something that takes place in hell. It, it's just yeah, just the idea because hell, hell being sort of a timeless, uh, you know, place of contradictions and you know, and I think in in the Scarlet Gospels it had its own you know its own laws and people and and. Uh, it was like a real place. I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's just an idea. Uh, it sure sort of looks like it's hell when you look at the cover of this book. Reminds me of that those uh, the cover reminds me of a uh, was that Wayne Barlow's yeah uh, Inferno yeah Inferno. That's yeah. what it kind of reminds me of. Oh yeah, I'm still finishing that book that I was reading, uh, The God's Demon. So. Yeah, about that. Based off, I, I need to read that. Based off your suggestion. Yeah, it's kind of hard to read. It's very, uh, it's very dense, very densely mm-hmm. packed with uh, a lot of stuff, a lot of visual um, descriptions and stuff. I, I really enjoy the book. So. Um, well, I, I totally recommend getting the Scarlet Gospels if you don't have the toys and you haven't read it before. And this is another Clive Barker story that's not really like anything else that he's written. I mean, I guess it's sort of a com. It, it, it would be sort of like, um, what would it be like? I can't really even think of another. It, it, it's got that feeling like Maximilian Bacchus that you just have to accept that this world doesn't make sense, or it's not like the reality that you know that we know. Um, but it's it's violent. It's not like this Maximilian Bacchus in other ways. I don't know. I'm really, you know, uh, we haven't mentioned yet that this was from Subterranean Press. Uh, yeah. Dark Regions, right? Was it? I forget. No. It's sub- Subterranean. Yeah, Subterranean Press. Uh, you got uh, first appearances. Okay, so I'm looking at the bibliography. Uh, bibliography, I'm sorry about that. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at the bibliography, and it says here, Book 1, The Secret Face of Genesis, came out with Agonistus. Agonistus. Yeah. The book two, The Assassin Transformed, uh, came out with the Scythemeister. Book three, The Avenger, came out with Lucidique. The Surgeon of the Sacred Heart came out with Talisac. The Haunter of Primordium, chapter five, came with uh, Venal Anatomica. And the final chapter, The Second Coming, was uh, released with the figure of Mongroid, which is really cool. Mongroid, that's yeah. my favorite one. <laughs> yeah, it's... It, yeah, that was a disgusting description of the birth of that thing. Yeah, yeah. Like he talks about it in the book. Uh, <laughs> yeah. he's, he's so good, he's so good at that. Getting like yeah. very vivid descriptions and way yeah. describes stuff. I love it. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's great. Wait until you read the opening of Scarlet Gospels. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. It's, it's it's like it is it is like that. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of visual, uh, visual and. Uh, Visual and, and sound descriptions of what's going on with the uh, Pinhead's victims. Yeah. Um, and and it came out with five or four different editions, I think. There was the um, U.S. limited edition. There was mm-hmm. hardback, signed, limited to 26. 
uh, signed lettered copies, and it cost $275. Uh, then there was the U.S. limited edition that was hardback, 350 uh, signed numbered copies, and that was $60. Yeah. And there's the U.S. hardback edition, which is just $30. So, I think it's that I'm not. If I'm not mistaken, it's all sold out though right now. Is it? Oh, yeah, good. I believe so. It's all. Uh, I was looking at Amazon, that. and there was some kind of complication with Amazon. I think that Subterranean they, Subterranean had to like uh, you know, uh, bow out of a lot of sales really? from like uh, um, from like Amazon and other retailers because they had too many orders, that, but they didn't have enough oh, books. Wow! So I, I had to, I canceled my order from from Amazon and went to right from Subterranean and got it that way because I didn't want to lose out on getting it. Yeah, right. More and more, I'm trying to buy things more. You know, especially with this Clive Barker stuff, I'm trying to buy things more from the source. Yeah, just because of stuff like that, and we're buying these limited editions, and there's more chance of autographs. And I don't know, it just, you know, and same yeah. thing with like I, I'd recommend um, like Scarlet Gospels. I mean, they Amazon had the pre-order up before anybody, but that does, you know, but that may not be the best place to buy it. Unfortunately, I was, I you know, I, I took I took a long time to buy the the book. So unfortunately, I think I'm looking at Subterranean Press's page, and I'm it on says third right edition sold out, limited edition sold out, and lettered edition sold out. So everything is sold out. I guess I'll have to get it from eBay. You could get the ebook. I think is the only. Yeah, sure, I'd like to have the physical book as well. So yeah. And it's kind of a small book, right? It's 88 pages long. Yeah. Yeah. I really like the cover. It's really amazing. So you d- you did uh, order a copy. If you did, I'd get in contact with uh, Subterranean about it. I haven't yet. No, I haven't. I was uh, thinking about uh, doing it on Amazon, but uh, when uh, I decided to buy it from Amazon, it was the same day that I, I read that posted uh, yeah. article about – well, you know, uh, don't buy it from Amazon. Buy it from Subterranean because Amazon's not going to have enough. Um, okay. You yeah, know, I see that on here. Able- it, it is sold out everywhere. They do have how, they have on their main page how to buy the ebook for you know for our listeners that want to do that. But but yeah. I, I I love the physical book. I think it looks really nice. It, it'll it'll look good on the shelf. It's great that there's some reviews uh, on Subterranean Press yeah. from some publishers, and it says here from Publishers Weekly. Horror legend Barker, Hellraiser, builds a world of corruption, decay, political intrigue, and bile-inducing detail in this tightly constructed novella. <laughs> yeah, that's bile, a very pun. Bile-inducing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, bile-inducing. Primordium is fully fleshed out with small details, but much is left for readers to wonder and have nightmares about. And then San Francisco Signal uh, wrote in their review, Tortured Souls is a one-sitting read. Even so, it moves along at a very swift pace, wasting little time to turn some unexpected corner and introduce some new perverse monstrosity, all the while driving towards a conclusion that is both satisfying and alluring enough to want to see more stories set in the strange world. And uh, there's a last one from October Country that said, The story itself is classic Barker. It involves an ancient corrupt city known as Primordium, a demonic creature of mysterious origin, the transformer of human flesh known as Agonistis. Or Agonistus, I don't know. Lucy Deek, the daughter of a corrupt politician, and Krieger, the assassin she recruits to help destroy Primordium's crooked dynasty. These elements and many more come together in a short, tightly woven tale of greed, supernatural forces, and violence. Yeah, and I love the. I can only see the stuff that's on Subterranean Press, but I love the drawings that Eggleton did for um, for all these characters. They're really amazing. They're kind of sketchy looking, right? It looks like. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like real sketchy. Yeah. It looks like Pencil. he did. He he Pencil. kept the pen on the paper for a long time, just just tracing everything out. Pretty cool. Let's see what was it? Oh, there's a Talisac. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so, yeah. Like Talisac was... looks looks a lot like the toy of Talisac. Mm-hmm. But I'm starting to think maybe that person on the cover is Agonistes and not, um, maybe not the the Scythemeister. Yeah, the side Meister has kind of like a um, like a layer of uh, skin, a flap of skin pulled over the top of his head, right? Yeah, no, I think that's that's um, that's Vena Anatomica. Oh, sorry, yeah, that's Vena Anatomica. Yeah, yeah, because he he lifts that up and then and then uh, Lucidique 
cuts his eyes out. Yeah, the poor monster just yeah. stumbles. Around. Yeah, and he just he just spends the next forty years screaming and acting like he just it just happened to him and he can never adapt to it. Yeah, yeah PTSD. He gets yeah. renamed. He gets re- renamed the. Uh, what is that? I wrote it down in my notes. Uh, he gets called the uh, blind one. The, yeah, the blind one. That's what it could get yeah. called. She found him in the cemetery, weeping from his slit eyes, the weary tears of a man who weeps every night but knows no cure for them. That's a pretty cool line right there. Yeah. yeah. There was a cool uh, description I wanted to read. It was like Ananasti's or Agonasti's prayer. Mm. I had it. It was really cool, but uh, we can keep moving forward if uh, you want to. I was just. Well, I think it's. I think it's really interesting that that we got all of this, you know, sort of rich uh, story and and uh, this whole world, just because um, because Todd McFarlane wanted to make Hellraiser figures and he couldn't. Oh, that reminds me. There's something. I think I mentioned this when we covered Tortured Souls in a previous episode. But um, if you look at the figures, uh, some of them have uh, signals carved in their flesh or their tools or something that are taken from the same shapes that appear in the Hellraiser box. Oh. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. You know those um, – it's hard to describe them, but there's one that looks like um, – it looks like a uh, uh, number three backwards, and there's another one that looks like uh, like uh, like uh, an F without the second dash and stuff like that. And so these little letters, I remember this because uh, when this came out in 2001, <laughs> I was hanging out at the Hellbound web, and all these people there were, you know, of course, uh, huge Hellraiser fans. And so I think someone identified that and was like, hey, here's, you know, these detailed pictures of the figures, and here's this this uh, shape that's carved into one of the figures and here's yeah. the equivalent on the box <coughs> and here's they, they had like three or four of those so it's like and, we um, can't make pinhead but we can you know we'll we can at least put a little nod to to sure. Hellraiser. yeah these creatures were basically cenobites when you look at them you know? oh, oh yeah. yeah yeah oh yeah definitely the leather kind of you know bondage yeah, yeah. and metal Fields and of, yeah yeah I, I think I found I found the prayer that you were looking for at uh it was the uh, the prayer to Agonistas. It says, "O oh, Agonistas, dark deliverer, make me in the image of my enemies' nightmares. Let my flesh be the stuff from which you carve their terrors." And it, it goes on, but that, that's yeah. that's pretty I like gruesome. That there. Yeah. Uh, do y'all know of any more? Uh, I hope there. They he would write another story about it. I, you know, it definitely leave the ending leaves you know more. Uh, Sure, or room for, uh, yeah, I think it's really cool that I mean I don't know if maybe they just didn't make enough, but may, maybe they didn't judge the the um, the demand for this book, right? That they sold out so fast. Yeah, yeah, I would I would buy one. I mean, I yeah. just didn't have a chance to buy it. Now it's sold out. So maybe that means that maybe they'll make more. Maybe that means that they maybe Clive Barker would take another look at doing something else with this. It takes At a lot to make Clive Barker write a sequel to something. Yeah, I would. Yeah. I would say personally, I don't believe that he's going to do a sequel to this. Yeah, at this point. I mean, yeah, I, I, I mean, don't... it's it's wrapped up pretty well. You know, it kind of yeah. wraps up like a it kind of wraps up like a grim fairy tale. Yeah, if you know what I mean uh, by yeah. that. How everybody. Uh, you know, I think that... I think it would be cool to see Agonistes appear somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe the whole rest of it, you know, maybe the whole rest of it could be left alone. I don't, I'm not sure. I do confess that I'm not entirely familiar with the tortured souls too, the fallen, but I remember there was suffering Bob and, uh, there was a female figure called Camille noir and I'm, I'm looking it up right now. And there was, and, and there was no, Pack, yeah. And there was no story that came with those. Zane, oh, no. feverish and Moribundi. Yeah. This came out from uh, spawn, spawn toys, McFarland toys. Yeah. I wonder if those were done without Clive Barker. Mm, I think it was still Clive Barker uh, inspired as well. Yeah. It says here, uh, the first series was optioned for film by Universal Studios. McFarlane and Barker went back to their drawing boards to come up with a new series of figures even more twisted than the first. 
The result is Tortured Souls 2, a further re redefinition of human flesh as canvas. So, yeah. And then there was Infernal P Parade also, which is sort of like Tortured Souls, but in a different world. Oh, yeah, that's right. And yeah. it also came with stories. Yeah, yeah. Were those written by Clive Barker? Well, I thought that the stories for Infernal Parade were more like what you see on the backboard of the toys. Right. I think there was just like a... Like introductions a to the characters. It was much, much shorter. You yeah. Know? Yeah. But if they could put that together and sell it, maybe that, that would be nice. I don't you know, think it, it would, would also be nice to see what if there was some kind of a story or something for the Tortured Souls 2. I don't think the Infernal Parade stories would fill up too many pages, though. No, probably not. Yeah, it probably would have been good as a supplemental material for, for this, actually. No, uh, I was just going to say I I thought there were stories with the, when they did the second you know volume of toys. No, I, like, I was wasn't? watching that really closely because I you know because I'm collecting Clive Barker short stories. Yeah, yeah, and it was like you know I I'd, I'd always thought about buying the toys for the first series, but I definitely was never going to buy the second series because they didn't even have books. I probably won't buy them either because of that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean they're 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 cool and everything, but it's like, I don't know, it's just not something that you you know, but you can just set out and you know as a conversation piece. Yeah, <laughs> I was really excited when I was really excited when the Hellraiser figurines from NECA came out though. Those were really cool. They, yeah. I didn't get to buy a lot of those, but I still have like some of the original Cenobites and uh, Pinhead and the Chatterer and Julia, and you know I have a limited edition get... of Chatter. I want to get the there's a there's a Frank they have that is really good where he's like you know dressed up in the, the clothes and yeah the suit he comes he comes with yeah yeah he had he comes with like some rats and uh, the switchblade <laughs> a knife yeah. <laughs> yeah that was really cool and Julia and Julia came with bandages that you could take off bandages I, and dress I've wow. got that yeah it's I, really cool you can. Yeah, you can yeah. take off her dress and her bandages, and it's just a skinless Julia. It's really cool. That is cool. Yeah, and she's holding a heart. I've heard that the Doctor Shenard one is rare. It is, and that's a. Uh, my brother's uh, holding a here in Asheville. Him and a friend hold a a toy uh, convention, and they're having one next month. And I bought a table to sell some some of my stuff, some of my my toys. I'm oh, gonna well. see. I'm gonna see if I can. Uh, try to trade somebody for a Shenard because that that's a really a rare figure yeah well i'm sure you'll be able to find it there yeah At every horror convention i've ever gone to there's been somebody selling you know all those nika toys yeah hopefully i can find it for a good price so yeah. maybe do some trading or something like that oh yeah well <clears throat> there were two different uh there were two different sets for Shenard from NECA. I think I remember there was a, a more normal one, like uh, like the other figurines, except, of course, this one had the big tentacle connected to the head. Mm. So it was kind of a box set. But then there was a statue of Chouinard. You know, there was a limited edition statue. There was like, uh, I don't, I forgot how tall it was. But I have the pinhead statue, for example, and it was the same size, maybe a little taller. And so sometimes I'm not entirely sure when I see this stuff appear on eBay – uh, they use this stock photo, and I'm I'm never entirely sure. Is this the plastic one or the ceramic statue? It's it's hard to it's hard to tell sometimes. Um, I, I wish I could get the statue, the box set. I would like to have it, but it just it's so expensive. You know, it's is it? it yeah. How much, how much is it going for? Well, I can Google that up now on eBay, but every time I look at that, it's it it's it, it varies between two hundred dollars and some. Oh wow! Quick. Yeah. Dang. Here it is. Uh, Hellraiser Dr. Shenard action figure, deluxe box set. And this is like the smaller one. So it's basically made of plastic and just like the other ones. This one here from Australia, it's $153.91. And then the 22-inch resin statue is $275 on eBay. Yeah. It varies. There's like 199 you know. And then I find another of the box set is $119.99. So it, I it's hard. I mean, this is really expensive. Unless you're yeah, willing to buy something without the box yeah. and everything and used, you can get it for like 75 bucks, maybe, the yeah. plastic one. But if you want the 22-inch uh, resin statue, then it, it's 
it's between two hundred and fifty, three hundred dollars. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I have too many Godzilla toys, so I can't buy other. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'd like to see that collection someday. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I I actually got to move them out of the closet finally. I've got a shelf for them now. Oh, nice. So, do we have any feedback for this episode? Uh, oh yes, actually we do. We've got a. Um, I got an email from Nu Nuno. Said mm-hmm. I follow. I follow with attention your podcast. Informed, made with devotion and charisma. Thank you. Oh, allow me a question for the graphic novels of the universe. Hellraiser. Hellraiser. Should I buy this first, Hellraiser Masterpieces Volume 1 and Volume 2, or Hellraiser Volume 1 through 4 trade paperbacks? So um, m- my answer there is I would get the Hellraiser trade paperbacks. Yeah. The the Hellraiser masterpieces they take random stories and put them together like which ones they think are the best, and so you're not getting the complete collection. Okay, so he asked, what will the difference be between the two collections and in terms of quality? Uh, well, I can tell you right now that these Hellraisers trade paperbacks that he's talking about from Boom Studios, those are the ones with the stories. With the modern stories, right? The stories that came out recently from Boom Studios. Well, no, he's talking about Hellraiser. Um, I don't think there are trade paperbacks of the Boom ones. Yeah, no, there are. I have like three are. of them. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got three of them. He I, okay, had to I misunderstood, to it. Yeah, I misunderstood the question. I thought those were epic trade paperbacks. Right, so the big difference between the Hellraiser masterpieces and the trade paperbacks. Yeah, they're completely different. Boom is that the first ones, the Masterpieces, came from the 90s comics released by Marvel. Yeah. And uh, Masterpieces is basically just a collection of some of the best stories or more popular stories, and yeah. they slapped them together to a paperback, and they sold that. My opinion of these is that uh, I've seen some. I don't know if it was a problem with printing for the, for the paperback that I saw of these Masterpieces, but it seemed like there was a uh, degradation in quality from – if I put the 90s comics next to this one, it looks like that one has been scanned and reprinted. Mm. So if you want the crisp colors, I would – you know, crisp design and lines and colors, I would go buy the 90s uh, yeah. Marvel Hellraiser comics because those are – those can appear cheap on eBay. Yeah. You know, you can get a full set of that for like forty dollars. And knowing now that, that what he's asking, this is really comparing apples and oranges. Yeah, because even the continuities are different. Uh, yeah, they're they're complete. It's a completely different set of stories for these boom trade paperbacks. Yeah. So I would say, like you said, get the original get the original comics for the epic, uh, the epic run of twenty. And then for the new, and then yeah, get the get, get those boom um, trade paperbacks for the Hellraiser, the new Hellraiser stories, right? Because the Marvel comics used to have at least three or four stories per issue. Yeah, of course their issues had more pages, but um, yeah. the boom comics, Hellraiser comics that were written by you know uh, Clyde Barker, Chris Monfett, uh, Mark Miller, yeah. um, uh, Ben Mears. Those are different stories, and they're ongoing chapters. They, they had story arcs. Yeah. So you would have 22 pages, and then it would continue to the next month. And that's why they have all these trade paperbacks. You have The Dark Watch, The Road Below. Those were the story arcs. And so it depends. I, I mean mm-hmm. – And Heaven's for, Reply was a story arc too. Yeah. So I well, would I say – uh, if you like short stories, short stories made by famous comic book artists, go for the masterpieces. But if you can find the original Marvel Hellraiser comics from the 90s, that's the best. And uh, as for the Boom Comics, buy the first trade paperback, read it, and see if you like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that, that, that series has come to an end, right? Hellraiser Bestiary is done. Uh, and there are no more plans that we know of to, to continue the Hellraiser comics. So if they... If they encapsulate that whole run into trade paperbacks, then I'd get all of them. Mm-hmm. They're asking on the Occupy Media Boards, too. It, still, it's never there's never been a definite saying. Is the Nightbreed Boom Studios, is that done, or are they just done with that one 12-issue you know, series run? Well, we're, we've been hearing that rumor for a while that it's going to be finished after number 12. 
Yeah, um, and we asked Mark Miller about it when we were in Los Angeles for um, the Nightbreed screening, and he said, you know, we, yeah, we heard this rumor, too. This is the first we hadn't heard anything about that. Yeah. Um, but it's, I don't know, because, you know, they used to show preview covers of all of the ones, you know, going, you know, way out, right? They did that with Hellraiser. They've been doing that with Nightbreed. And we're not seeing those anymore for Nightbreed past so. number 12. So I don't know. Yeah. I, I wouldn't want to say 100%, but... I mean, I, I just don't want to... I don't know what to tell the people on that. So I, yeah. I just, you know, I just told yeah. them to... I have no clue yeah, about no, they're how not, that's going to end. We're not hearing, so... I guess they were doing the story arc, and now that it's done, I think... Excuse me. Let's see, let's see if they're going to pick it up again. Yeah. Um, yeah, I hope so. I don't know. Because I, I think so it too. was right around like 9 or 10 that the actual story started. Uh, up mm-hmm. until that point, it was all it was all backstory. Yeah, backstory for the characters that everyone knows and loves, like yeah. Lude and yeah. uh, but once, Shun Assassin. Yeah, but once we got and Otis and Clay and and uh, Chocolat, uh, but once we got past episode nine, then they they skipped past the the um, the events of Nightbreed of the movie, and and they're going into, you know, this is what happens after the. The director's cut of Nightbreed events. I think there's a good chance that it's going to continue. And even if it doesn't, at least they've made a, a pretty nice run of comics that I really enjoyed. I yeah. mean, they, they're really beautiful. I, I, I like them more than I did some of the Hellraiser comics. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I really hope they continue it. it it's, it's, been, it's had a, a much easier through line than the Hellraiser comics. I think the Hellraiser comics had too many guest writers and stuff. I mean, not not bestiary, but I'm talking about just them. You know, for one continuous story, they still they kept on getting different writers and different artists all the time, and um, even characters would look differently from one issue to the next, and it was hard to understand what was going on sometimes. Yeah, I don't want any of the writers to get angry at me, and uh, I'm just going to say that I, I I wasn't thrilled about the two hells. Um, story arc that there was like an infernal hell and then there was a Cenobite hell I I kind of got a little lost uh, mm. when they introduced that I kind of got like well okay but uh, and Leviathan being a milkman so <laughs> yeah what? but you know it was still fun to I read I mean I, yeah. I'm just I was just more of a more used to little stories like the Marvel ones that's why I enjoyed Bestiary a lot yeah um, I like the little neatly packed, uh, you know, little stories with beginning and end, just a few pages. You have to throw a lot more when you're doing a short story. You have to throw a lot more originality and and, and detail into the story because it's a short story. So you have to m- make an impact in a few pages. You don't have the luxury of having a whole story arc to set up some storylines and then get the payoff. Yeah. Here yeah. it's like three, four pages. You got to do your best so you can get a nice payoff. And um, you know, I think they 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 hit it with Bestiary. They did that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the, right. Right. When it ends. I had the first. <clears throat> I had. The, I had the first three issues of those, and I there was not. A, I think I can't remember those. At least of those issues, I, there was. I enjoyed every one of those stories. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, and that was when I mean, they were building up with this this uh, sort of battle between Pinhead and and uh, Kirsty, right? In the first three issues, I think that's what was they were working up yeah. to that. No, uh, was, I was referring. I was talking about uh, just uh, oh, Beast uh, Jerry, Beast Jerry. Oh, okay, I, yeah, first, yeah. I just I really like. I'm, I'm good just for uh, agreeing with Jose. Is really I yeah. like those like you know, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Kind of, kind of story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, those are good. I never read those other ones. The ones uh, where Harry Demore was like Pinhead. I never yeah. read that. I never. never it, got it, it, the story got a little crazier as you as you progressed, but it, it started out um, it started out pretty strong, and there are things that I liked about it going through. Um, but it did it did get a you know because there there were threads that people would leave and then the other artists or writers would have different ideas about where they wanted the story to go and they would not yeah. maybe they wouldn't pick up on you know something important that the other previous person thought was important. 
I like the little details that they introduced in the stories, like uh, Tiffany coming back. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Oh, cool. And, and what was that other thing? Um, and Elliot Spencer looking like Doug Bradley. That was yeah. that was cool. Yeah, yeah. and and I liked um, that the you know that that painting or that 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 sculpture painting that he did for that Fangoria magazine. Sure. Uh, that Clive Barker did. I like that they incorporated that into the story. Oh yeah, that's true. It was kind of a shaman's mask that they did. I think for uh, was it Fangoria or Rue Morgue? I kind of. I think it was Fangoria. I think it was Fangoria. Yeah, like three hundred or something or yeah. something like that. Yeah. That was cool. Oops. So they actually did. They got the likeness for Doug Bradley for like in the con, for the for the comic book. I I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, Elliot oh. Spencer looks just like Doug Bradley. It's it's pretty yeah. it's pretty nice. <laughs> well, and oh. Kirsty looks a lot like uh, Ashley Lawrence too. Um, yeah. yeah, Tiffany maybe is a little harder to tell because I think uh, in real life she looks exactly like she did in in the movie, but they made her like grown up and looks different in the comic book. Oh, okay. Yeah. At least Gary just... Smart was saying that she looks exactly the same, you know, as she yeah, did. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, saying that. I was All gonna right. say that there is a uh, there's one last thing uh, for the Claw Barker uh, for the new Boom comic fans out there. Uh, they have uh, coming out in May 26th uh, is the uh, the first trade pack paperback volume. Oh, of that first four first four issues. You know we were talking about the Boom. Uh, yeah, the so they're, they're they're collecting one through four of Boom. They're Hell breaking. Razor? Yeah, they're breaking them down into like four issues a piece. Oh, I guess. okay. Kind of like they did with the next testament. Yeah, yeah. I I wish they would. I mean, we've said this before. I wish they would do bigger. Yeah. yeah. Well, I got I got uh, the Boom Hellraiser comics in trade paperback. I'm looking at it on my shelf right now. I have like number two, number three, and the Road Below uh, as a trade paperback, and I have Heaven's Reply and Requiem. Oh really? So I, yeah. I mean, I got these last year, I think. So. Um, so they're re re. Publishing them and do new trade paperbacks. Then I don't know. Yes, I, huh. that's what I'm seeing okay. here, at least. Okay. Maybe their first run of paperbacks ran out. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that kind of wraps it up here for us. Um, and uh, next time we'll we're still working out what we're going to do for our next episode, but we'll we'll try to do get it done on time. Hmm. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Okay, right. Thanks for all the yeah. feedback yeah. you send us, and keep yeah, sending thanks. us feedback. And you know, we're ready, getting ready to tackle Everville, uh, eventually Magica. So yeah, exciting, exciting episodes ahead of us. Yeah. The Clive Barker Podcast or BarkerCast is an independent editorial fan site and podcast that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Films. This podcast and site are a labor of love by the fans for the fans. News, features, and show notes for this episode can be found at www.clivebarkercast.com. Uh, go to iTunes and please leave us a review. Reviews really help us get the word out about Clive Barker. You can also find us on Podomatic, Xbox Music Store, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, Double Twist, Blackberry, and Pocket Cast. Uh, we have a Facebook page, so come on and, and uh, like our Facebook page and, and uh, join the Occupy Media Group for lots of discussion about Nightbreed and other Clive Barker stuff. On Twitter, we're at BarkerCast and at Occupy Midian. Opening theme by Mark Buckle.